How is everybody doing? I hope you're doing amazing. I have the absolute pleasure of being here with Giuseppe Sarmiento. This is a web class. This is a live, LinkedIn Live for all job seekers, those who are struggling to get back on their feet, who have been affected by the pandemic, who have been laid off, um, and those who are employed as well, those who are stuck maybe and they cannot get ahead. They are not enjoying what they do. They don't feel fulfillment in what they do. And they are trying to find new career opportunities, but struggling to find them and you know attract new interviews and then convert those interviews into uh, job offers. So I've brought here Giuseppe Sarmiento, who is a regular and who you will continue to see here on a daily basis. He has worked for the largest re recruitment agency in the world. He has a lot of experience and he has seen things from the other side, right? I've always been a job seeker myself and I've had tremendous success just applying for interviews and getting those interviews and getting offers on the first round. So I share all this knowledge from this side, from the job seeker side, and I bring Giuseppe to share what a recruiter does with all that information, how they think, and we will help you so that you can get ahead, okay? So Giuseppe, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me, I appreciate it. Hi, Ryan, thank you. Thank you again for having me, always a pleasure. Uh, for those who really don't know me or haven't heard of me, my name is Giuseppe, Giuseppe Sarmiento. Uh, I'm, an, well, I'm an engineer by trade, a recruiter by necessity, and consultant by passion. So I'm so happy to be here. This is the the, the first uh, live for many, many lives we're going to do to share pieces of information, everything we know. So follow us through all of this journey because we're, you're going to get like a lot of free information right here. It's going to be very, very useful to all of you. And we're going to start from, from the very beginning. We're going to start from the very start of what job seekers actually struggle, like just the beginning. We did, both of us, we did a poll this morning, just like probably three or four hours ago. And combined, we have more than 1,500, 1500 votes. And these are the results. I'm gonna get, we're gonna dig into that of what the people think and what's the actual reality uh, for the, the clients that we've, we spoke to, with the clients we've helped, and also personal uh, experience. And I don't know, Brian, if you wanna take it from here that you're showing your poll. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to know whether job seekers understand what the first mistake is that they make throughout the hiring process, right? So interestingly, the right answer was selected by 59% of the, the users who participated. So you might have been wondering if you've been following me for a while and Giuseppe as well, what do we do with all this information? We leverage this information to be able to, I guess, inspire, empower, educate, and be able to have other conversations with job seekers who reach out to us personally via WhatsApp, via email, to help them understand what it is that they're struggling with. So this particular question is, what's the first mistake job seekers make? So tailor the resume, and we can actually discuss each one of these and why we selected each one of these options. Not know what they like to do, write cover letters, or reach out with have a job, right? So again, the right answer was not know what they like to do. And interestingly, I, and just so you know how we write this, okay? You can actually, if we, if you go to our comments here, let's uh, scroll down to my particular comment here. You can see that I actually write a lot about what I think and why I'm writing this particular post, okay? So I'm writing or I'm hiding this answer as part of the comments. So if you ever come across one of my polls, this is a poll, right? You can all, you can typically find the answer within the comments, okay? So I encourage you not only to, to vote, but also to like, to comment, to engage with other people's comments, with mine as well, to ask questions. This is to your advantage, okay? We are doing well, actually. We are living, we want you to make the most out of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a gold mine for personal, professional, and financial success and growth. We want you to make the most out of this. So if you ever come across a poll and you find it interesting, vote, like, comment, share it, right? It is for your advantage. So not know what they like to do. I went to a birthday party yesterday, just so you know what inspired me to do this. I had the idea to write this poll 
earlier last week when we decided again with Giuseppe to start with these LinkedIn live streams. We were going to do this, but yesterday I went to a birthday party and I was speaking to a friend of mine. So you still I actually don't know what I like to do. So he's actually lost, but he hasn't taken the time to rethink what he wants to do for a living. He's not enjoying what he does. He's doing it. He's paying the bills. He's doing okay, but he's not enjoying. He's not finding fulfillment in it. And most people that I speak to, they don't find fulfillment in what they do. So that's why it's so important to go back to square one or even square zero and introspect and start to think, what do you actually enjoy doing? Because you might be going out there and trying to understand what the market desires, but if you're not interested in that, you don't have a match, right? They're looking for something that you don't enjoy. You will always continue to be mis miserable. We don't want you to be miserable. We want you to enjoy your careers as much as Giuseppe enjoys his and I enjoy mine. It doesn't matter what you do, you deserve happiness. So Giuseppe and I, we will try to share everything that we know in a very structured manner so that you make the most out of it and you get ahead in your career and you advance and you make the most out of it and you get compensated, you get a fair salary for your knowledge, skills, experience, and expertise. And that's why Giuseppe was saying, follow us along, follow Giuseppe, follow me, because on a daily basis, we will come here to tell you everything that we know. Everything has helped us. So Giuseppe lives in Vancouver. I live in Toronto. I've been here for almost 18 years with my family, and I have a family of my own now. And Giuseppe is in Vancouver. He's been there for four years. He's gotten a master's here. Um, so we'll share absolutely everything we know, and you can ask us any questions that you have. Okay. So Giuseppe, what would you like to say about this? Not know what they like to do. How much do you encounter this? And as a recruiter, have you encountered this a lot? Absolutely. Like pretty much a lot. From the recruiter's perspective, it's really hard to get into, into the person's head, the word, whether they like it or not, because the, the way the recruiter is, is, gets paid is to the person to get to, to be placed. So very few recruiters, and then again, I always did my best to 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 look for the person's interest but at the end of the day it's it's your responsibility as a job seeker as a person to look for what you're looking for what makes you happy now when i started uh, consulting when i started having my, my own clients then is when i started to see where the problem was actually lying this happened probably like a month uh, ago the, the, the first step of our method the to go all the way to the job offers and get the best compensation it starts with defining what's your next amazing job and we're going through this process with her and for each thing that the market wanted she had it but the the, the interesting part it was after each requirement she said i complain and i was like oh this is the, this is complicated oh I, I don't like this oh i take uh, so, so many hours on this and after probably half hour uh, into our session, I was like, wait, what are we doing this? Like, there's only nothing but complaints of the, your quotation marks, amazing job. So why don't we actually try think something you like and you love, and then we, we start tailoring your resume so you can make a career change. Career changes are not easy. I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's a walk in the park. It takes a little bit of time and effort but they are far from impossible. Like it happens. I made a career change. I'm an, I'm an, I'm an industrial engineer. I'm a licensed industrial engineer. And, I'm, and, and I changed to recruiting and now I'm a consulting for people and have tons of clients. So it's not about the, it's not about you just follow a career path that might be, how do I pull it? Might be profitable, but makes you miserable. Because if you start like that, it, it just you're just setting yourself yourself up for for failure so you need to define what's your the, your dream job your amazing job then for example just to continue uh, with with this case uh, she was like let's say 70 percent into logistics very into logistics and when she was working on a startup uh, she started making some sales stuff like that. So but she really enjoyed the the people's interactions she has, she has experience in sales but experience was not a hundred percent of that so we were like Okay, let's focus on that. Let's let's tailor your resume. Let, let, let's make us let's make a the market want you because of those skills. And she made it. Like she, she got a job in sales, and at the end of the day, it, and it's 
it's it's interesting how how the market is actually open for this kind of, of skills the only thing you need to know is that they will hire you not because of your skills but how good you are portraying them how good you are showing them and again there, there's a process to go through it but the first step is hey define what makes you uh, happy by any chance can you show uh, my poll do you have it uh, yeah absolutely is it possible yeah give me one second give me one Oops. Just to also, also continue what Brian said, don't be afraid to <laughs> to put a like, to put a comment. I'm doing my absolute best to reply to all of, of, of the comments every time I have a, a like a five minutes a five minutes break. I'm replying to all of the comments. If you comment on my post, I do my absolute best to to reply. If you see 47% say not knowing what uh, what what people want, so you you'll see that people know their mistake. And the other ones are things that you will see throughout the, the career process, probably not doing a proper networking, slacking at some point, having a bad attitude. That's pretty fair. We're going to cover those uh, later. But again, it's really hard to, for example, to get a positive attitude, to get to be super happy if you're doing something you're, you're not enjoying, if you're, if you're doing something you don't uh, like. And... It's not impossible, it's, an, it's not even hard to match your passion to what the market is looking for. But you need to start analyzing the market and then make a match to your skill set. And that's the first step. So, uh, Brian, any, any, any comments on this? No, I, I can't agree more. And I know that for most job seekers out there, for most professionals, they, I mean, they go through school, high school, sometimes university, college, university. And once they graduate, they, they don't even know what they want to do, right? And they've spent thousands and thousands of dollars and hours studying, and they haven't found their passion. And now they're supposed to do something with that education, right? And then they just carry on. But at some point they ask themselves, why am I doing this? I, I don't even want to do what I'm doing. I just don't find happiness. And that you know, makes them miserable at the end of the day. So if you're not enjoying what you do, and it's not about the pay, okay? Pay is one thing, but of course you need the pay to be able to have the, the standard of living that you want to have, to live however it is that you want to live. Um, but it is about what you do and finding your, finding your purpose. Are you actually making the most out of your day, right? We end up spending eight, 10, 12 hours, depending on the country where you live in, spending them with your colleagues at a certain organization doing something do you find that valuable? Do you find that you are living your purpose? Do you find that you're making a positive impact in the world? Does the organization that you work for, uh, is it aligned with your values, right? What about, the, what about the industry? Do you see that there is room for growth for you or you're completely stuck, right? And the things that you do on a daily basis, I mean, do you find them like they're mundane things? Personally, when I wake up in the morning, I'm happy to do what I what I do. And I wish everybody had this same feeling to just be able to do it day, night, evenings, weekends, holidays, vacations, like it doesn't matter. Not that you have to become a workaholic or that you have to <laughs> just live to work, but I don't even feel like I'm working. And I know that I'm, I'm in a blessed position, but I work to make that happen. And you guys can do the exact same thing. If you work smart, I mean, they always talk about working hard and working smart. But if you work smart and you have a strategy in place, you can actually make this happen too. As opposed to just continuing to carry on for years and years and years. And one day you find yourself saying, why did I waste all this time? Because time is precious. You're not going to get it back, right? So it's important that at some point, hopefully it's maybe this conversation, right? Maybe it is some other message. Maybe it is a week from now when you hear this again and you say, you know what, actually, yes, he's right about this or Giuseppe is right about this. I have to do something about it because I'm not enjoying it. And we're granted this one life. So let's make the most out of this. So what we're trying to share with you today is that you have to draw the line on the sand and say up to here, I understand. I didn't, I didn't make the most out of my career. I did not make the progress that I was looking for. I didn't enjoy it, but that ends here. From now on, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to really look at what these career opportunities are and whether I really want to do them or not. 
And if I don't want to do what those career opportunities are, those job descriptions are all about, then I need to find something that truly makes me feel happy. Okay. And the question is, do you know how to find them? And do you know what to understand? Can you understand whether there's a lot of demand for what you want to do? Because if there's no demand, then you cannot do that. Right. So are there a lot of job openings for that, for that thing that you want to be doing on a daily basis? So I want to ask everybody here, are you making the most out of LinkedIn? Do you understand how to search for jobs on LinkedIn and find them and apply? Do you get ghosted? Are they getting back to you? Are you finding that your that your profile matches with what the employers are looking for? Right? Giuseppe, tell me please, those clients that you've worked with, are they lost? Do they understand how to work with LinkedIn? What what do they make out of this? LinkedIn, it's a, it, it's, it's not a new platform by any means, uh, but it feels like it. It, uh, I mean, I, I, I would be lying if I said that that two three years ago I I, I was doing the best out of LinkedIn. No, I had my LinkedIn account, uh, but I, I wasn't actually using it properly. And it had, there's so many opportunities here on LinkedIn, so the the people are actually missing out. Uh, it's mostly on, on the networking part. And we've got to do a live only a focus on networking. What's the, what, what's the best that you can do to, to get the, 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 the most out of, out of LinkedIn to, to grow your network because you always have to be networking. And I'm just going to put a little disclaimer here. You always have to be networking, but you don't always have to be selling. That's like two completely different things that that's where people get it wrong. They think that networking means getting something out of people and it's the exact opposite. So we're gonna, we're gonna go there uh, in, into, in, in another life that's a promise. Uh, now I would like to just, just a, a, a quick anecdote and then we're gonna start to give you more, oh, a Peruvian. <laughs> so happy, I'm Peruvian too. Uh, a little anecdote uh, from myself and then we're gonna start to give you like particular advice so what you can actually do to make this first step to identifying your, your amazing job. And the, the thing that happened to me is that, as they say, I'm Peruvian, born and raised. I came to, I came to Canada in, to, to Canada in 2016, so like five and a half years ago, four, you were take. And I chose my career right after high school. Like I literally, they, they made me choose my life career when a month ago I needed to ask for permission to go to the washroom. That that's that was the the, the dichotomy of of making a life decision and being well a kid because I, I I finished high school when I was sixteen, so I started my university when I was seventeen. I started engineering school at seventeen, so I just powered through it. And when I started working uh, as, as an engineer, uh, yes, I learned a lot, but there was no uh, fulfillment. So I, I didn't know what to do for around two years. And I saved as much uh, money as I could. And I made the jump. I, I, I came to Canada to study a master's degree in human resources. And, and then the story changed 180. So it, it was complicated. But the reason I discovered that I liked... Uh, recruiting and I like talking to people and I like helping people it wasn't because I was just sitting on my desk with a, things like that like a horse it was like because I was talking to people I was exploring the uh, options and at some point a, a previous supervisor of, of, of mine asked me to 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 help them with the recruiting process of uh, the interns and I just found it that it was amazing and I was like yeah this, this is what I wanted uh, to do and I started talking to people inside the company. I, I used to work at Scotiabank back in, in, in Peru. And the transition wasn't really that smooth, especially with somebody uh, as young as me. So I, ma I made the jump. Uh, it, it was risky, it was scary, but I can assure you it was worth it. It was not automatic. It was a, a really peak <laughs> learning curve. Uh, but if anyone is hesitating or is, or is scared to do something, plan but don't uh, waste your waste your life planning plan and execute like just define what you want and go after it and as i as i said before the, the we're going to start giving you a little pieces of advice to for you to start making this first 
the step. When we normally do with our clients, the first step is defining your next great job, your next um, amazing job. And we start leveraging uh, LinkedIn jobs. If you go to LinkedIn, you're going to find several job descriptions. And you need to know how a job description is normally structured. Uh, if if a company has like government ties or, or, or it, it's a very well-established company, the job description is going to be really well put together. If not, they're going to write it the way they, they want it. But for, in, for the most part, there is some sort of a structure. And you're going to have find the two main things in a job description is what they call a basic qualifications or the must-haves or the, or the preferred qualifications or the nice-to-haves. They can put whatever title they want. Again, depending on the company, is going to be better structure or not. So if you start analyzing the, the BQs, the, the basic qualifications on the must-haves are the things that you need to have. You need to have at least 80% of those, if not 100%, depending on the role, depending if the, if the, if the company has government ties or not. Uh, but that is, is exactly what the role is all about. So read it, read not only one, I would say read at least 10 and analyze, hey, do I, do I have these requirements? What do I need to match the requirements? And do I like these requirements? Because this is what we went through with my clients. Like from all of the requirements, she probably had like around 80% of the basic requirements, which is a really, really good percentage, but she hated more, more than half of them. <laughs> so if you don't like what you're, what you're seeing there, then something is off. Then you then realize, okay, what do you want to do? If maybe you like talking to people. You like advertising, for example. Then look for advertisement uh, jobs. Go to the basic qualifications and see which of those qualifications you actually match. You'll be surprised that you probably match more than what you think. Maybe they asked, uh, maybe you don't have all the marketing uh, background, but you have, the, I don't know, uh, you have led a team of 10 people or something, and that's what they want. Perfect. There's one one qualification right there that helps you uh, have more and more qualifications, and then you can see how can you obtain the other ones, how can you close that gap. We're going to go through that in another life because this is only the first step for you to identify what's your passion, what do you like, and the vast majority of the times, the market will have something for you. You just have to start analyzing. So first, is your job fulfilling enough for your next amazing job? Let's say you are now a, a, like what Brian used to be, a product owner. So look for product owners. Let's see all of the basic qualifications. Do I have these basic qualifications? Do I like these basic qualifications? And there's also preferred qualifications that give you a really good edge if, if you have them, but you can also you can be hired if you don't have the, the, the preferred. You, for, for, for starters, just focus on, on, on the basic as the first step. So uh, do you have anything anything to, to add, uh, Brian? Yeah. The clients maybe? So I want you to all to understand that these job descriptions, there's no standard, okay? You go from company to company and they all look different. And they are all organized differently. And, and some of them even mix some of these contents within the same section. And the name of the sections are completely different from one to another. So there are three areas that I'd like you to understand, maybe four even. The first one is the basic qualifications that Giuseppe is referring to. That's, those are your must haves, what they are truly looking for, okay? And then you have your preferred qualifications and those are your nice to haves, okay? That's who they are looking for. But what's important for you to recognize first when you define your next amazing job is the responsibilities. Who you are is who you are right now. Maybe if you are not a 100% match with what they're looking for, you know that there is a gap, okay? Maybe you have a gap with one organization, but not overall, okay? That's why Giuseppe was mentioning that you have to look at the overall market. Maybe look at 10 job descriptions, right? If you're looking for a product owner role, we're just talking about one example, okay? Product owner role. Let's look at 10 different job descriptions and, and understand what the market desires are. What are the commonalities between being a product owner for this organization and this organization and this organization? And what's your gap? What are you missing? And what are the responsibilities as well, right? If you're not enjoying it, if you're currently a product owner, you're not enjoying this. Is it because of this in, because of this organization, because of the culture of the organization, because of your colleagues? Is it because of the actual work that you're doing? 
Is it because of the client, maybe? But you have to ask yourself all these questions. If you're enjoying what you do, amazing, amazing. Just keep on doing what you're doing. I will give you a very personal example. And I've been asked this before, and many of my clients have been asked this before as well. And Giuseppe loves this, which has to do with, there's a particular question that they might ask you, hey, why have you been doing the same role from hey, one hey, organization hey. to another, right? You're doing this at one organization A, and then you did the exact same thing at organization B, and then C, and then D, and then E. Like all these five organizations, you did the same thing. My answer to that is, yes, because I absolutely love it. I found exactly what it is that I like to do, exactly what I'm good at, so I don't need to be switching around, demonstrating to anybody else that I want to keep on escalating or, or climbing up the corporate ladder. I found the one thing that I'm really good at, that I really enjoy, and that's what I would love to continue doing for the rest of my life, okay? So if you found that one thing that really you enjoy, that you would do even if it was for free, even if you were not compensated, then amazing, you found your purpose, at least for now. It can change, okay? Five years down the road, one year down the road, okay? 10 years down the road, maybe never, but that's your decision, okay? So don't let anybody else drive you to, to keep on climbing up this corporate ladder, which goes nowhere, okay? You find your own purpose. You, found, you find that thing that you're happy to do, even if you were not compensated, okay? I hope that you are enjoying it as much as I am describing it, because I am, I'm describing it Remembering when I was a product owner, I was not looking to become a product manager or, or a director or a VP. I was not obsessed with all this corporate growth. I just wanted to do what I really enjoyed. Okay, I was making a good living. I was living well. I was able to provide to my family. And at the same time, I was enjoying what I did. Why wake up to do something that I don't enjoy? There's no point. Okay. Um, Giuseppe was talking about LinkedIn jobs, right? And I was uh, showing here briefly what this uh, looked like. Most of you are familiar with this, but just a little bit. We're going to go into detail with regards to LinkedIn jobs later. But LinkedIn has been amazing for me. It's really given me four career opportunities. I've gone, again, as a product owner, without even switching roles or seniority, not going from an intermediate to a senior, that didn't even matter. But I, I went from $75,000 a year to $90,000 a year to $110,000 a year. And then the next jump, $220,000 a year when I was working for the government of Canada. So I want you to understand that not necessarily you have to make a jump in terms of seniority or role to be able to make a lot more money. But it's important that you recognize your worth, okay? And what the market desires are and how much the market is prepared to pay for you. And Giuseppe, tell me if, I, if you disagree on this. I mean, we've been working together for, for so long now that we pretty much know how each other thinks. Shouldn't you actually understand how much the market is prepared to pay so that you make the most out of it and you're not leaving any money behind? Because what's the point of just keep jumping around just for an extra 10% when you can take 100% jump? If the market is prepared to, to pay that, why not take it all with you, okay? Don't leave any money behind. If you have the knowledge, the skills, the experience, the expertise, and then the responsibilities of that organization merit that you should be compensated so much more, then learn how to negotiate. Because most job seekers, I'll tell you, they're afraid to negotiate because they think that they're going to lose. They're going to lose that opportunity if they negotiate. The majority of job seekers, I'm talking about like a 70 to 80% of job seekers, they don't negotiate. But there's a place. There's when and how to negotiate. You can just negotiate for the sake of negotiating. Right, Giuseppe? Yeah, I, I need to add something that I, I always repeat this. Uh, negotiating is uber important, but don't negotiate an offer you don't have. So don't negotiate before time. There is a time and there is a place. But the truth is, em, 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 employers do wait. They, they're really looking forward to that to that negotiation. And if you don't negotiate, you're leaving money on the table. But as, but as, as, as Brian said, you need to understand how much the market is it's willing to bear for each position. There are websites. The most well-known web, website for this is, is Glassdoor. I pers I'm not a huge fan of uh, Glassdoor because it's not 100% not accurate. There's no website that is 100% accurate. 
But there's another website called, called Payscale that I like way better because it gives information uh, by area, by geographical area, which which is way more accurate than, than Glasgow. Not 100%. <laughs> there is a gap, of course. But in order to give you a, 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 an understanding or, or a clear a clearer picture of how much the money is, is willing to bear for a particular role, uh, go, go to that website. But again, we'll go through that later. I, 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 and also I wanted to, to address really quick uh, this, this comment that you put on the, on the screen right now that I think is really interesting. Mm -hmm. The most gallery need employability skills to complement their degree. Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, having working experience does give you an edge. But if you need employment to get hired, nobody would ever get a job <laughs> out of, out of uh, university. There are uh, there are ways, and and the students, and I work with the students too. I've been a student too, so there are ways to to work around it. Of course, uh, if if you have absolutely no experience, and there's another entry level position, and this other candidate has six months or a year of experience, that person's gonna get an, an initial edge. But remember, entry level jobs are meant for entry level people. So there is more than, than knowledge. The more you advance your career, the more relevant your technical skills are gonna be. But for entry level, for new graduates, not so much. So there's two things that, that you can do. First, the, the, the thing that I said before, analyze what the market is looking for. They're gonna look for softwares, they're gonna look, if you see a job description for entry level, half of the basic qualifications are gonna be soft skills. And I can assure you that. So taking that into consideration, they're gonna, they're gonna tell you about your, probably your degree, your the, any software that you need to know, and they're gonna start with, with soft skills. So it's it's easier to tailor your resume around it. And, and I forgot the second, no, I'm just kidding. The, and the second thing that you, that you can do is again, if you see a gap, start closing it because they, they, they're gonna tell you what a soft skill, no, not soft skill, but what, 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 what technical skills you need. And if you haven't got them on, on, on your, on your degree, you, you probably want to want to start studying a little bit more. And a third thing that the new grads should be doing right now, and and they should be doing properly, is start networking with recruiters. But and this this is a big but, and please write this down. There are recruiters specialized in campus recruitment. If you go to a big organization, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, whatever, there's gonna be technical recruiters for senior roles, recruiters for intermediate roles, and recruiters that are exclusively uh, aiming new graduates, that exclusively hire for the programs. So you need to look for the organization, look for those campus recruiters, and network with them. And again, don't just write them, hey, I need a job. No, apply for the job first. <laughs> and second, start talking to them. Engage with their content. Add value. If you're going to add them, send a proper, a proper message. So that's a, that's a very important thing. Identify the recruiters that actually can help you. Bigger organization, and this is, this is something that I've realized very few people know. If, if there's a recruiter that it's recruiting only for, let's say, a middle management to upper management, they are forbid to talk to recruiter to to new grads because it's it's another recruiter job and you, you need to network with the other one. So if you network with the wrong recruiter, chances are they're not going to respond to you. So you have to do your due do, 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 do diligence and, and 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 network with the right recruiter, the campus recruiter. Normally this happens in bigger organizations, not for not not for a, a smaller or or startups, but again, start networking, start adding value on a platform like LinkedIn because it gives you a lot of advantage. Like, I don't know if we've mentioned this before. I think we mentioned it on on, on polls, but uh, LinkedIn has more than seven hundred million users, almost eight hundred right now, and only less than ten percent is active. By active, I mean putting likes and comments, and only one percent, and less than one percent, it's a it posting it is creating content and less way less than one percent is actually creating valuable content so you have a huge market to boost your visibility especially as a, a, a as a new grad you might think that you don't have enough skills or experience 
but you do. So don't uh, don't be afraid. Do do your advances. Do your due diligence. Uh, look what the market is looking for. Close the gap and start network with, with the right uh, recruiters. And don't be afraid to start sending messages and adding value. I know Brian want to say something right now. He's looking at me. Oh, so many things. You you got me triggered okay. with this because yeah, the other day I did a poll. I can't remember how long ago or where to find it now because People I did. Minutes. Yeah, I, I I've been doing so many. Uh, but a few things before I, before I forget. So these comments that you guys are leaving here, they are so meaningful and they actually touch me in a way. Like I was actually missing this interaction with so many of you. They actually mean a lot. Like, for example, when Angela said, you nailed it, like with that expression, with so much, I don't know, enthusiasm, right? Like, so, like so many questions, so, so many exclamation marks. For me, it's like, it doesn't matter who was talking, whether it was Giuseppe or me, but the fact that we're talking about something that really resonated with with her, with Angela, that's amazing. When uh, and and actually the fact that Angela is saying that's exactly where I'm at. So we're talking to people about what they are going through. We want to share all our knowledge and experience and expertise with you. So that if this resonates, it can get you unstuck. You can advance in your careers. You can get back on your feet. Why do I make the the, the difference here? Because those of you who are blessed to be employed, you are potentially looking for a new career opportunity. You're looking to advance in your careers. For those of you who are not so blessed to be employed at this moment and you want to be employed, you need to first get back on your feet, okay? You need to first start to attract interviews. I'm not talking just about one interview. But the one thing that I want you to understand is that once you get interviews, you need to know how to crack the interviews and get those offers. I spoke to a client the other day. He had 15 interviews, 15, and he got zero offers. And that is devastating. When he came to me, he said, Brian, I, I just don't know whether I should give up on this and go back to school. And I said, that's not the answer to your problem. Once you go back to school and you come out of school again, you will still have the same problem. And now <laughs> you will have spent so much more money, right? The problem doesn't go away because you look the other way. The problem is still there. Your challenge is still there. Let me know in the comments if, if you agree with this. So I started asking him a bunch of questions. One of them was, okay, how much is school going to be? Okay, and by the way, I have no, I don't care whether he goes one way or another. I just want to show him different perspectives. So I asked him, how much is school going to be? He said, well, I, I would get a full scholarship. Uh, school would be two years and it would be full scholarship of $200,000. I said, that's amazing. Congratulations, that's great. Uh, I mean, he must have done something right to get a full scholarship. For an MBA, right? And actually, it was his second second MBA. Okay, imagine someone with an undergrad and then with a with an MBA, he couldn't get a job offer. Okay, so he had an MBA already, but he was considering getting a second one because it was free and also because he was struggling to get any offers. And now he wanted to do that. It was going to take him two years to do this. He was not married, was not dating at this moment. But because of his age, he wanted to, at some point in the near future, start to build a family. If you're not working, you're not producing any income, how are you going to build a family, right? So this was going to be two years. So I tried to show him different perspectives. And I said, okay, you're not going to be spending for school, but you're also not going to be making any money for the next two years. So how much were you making before you were laid off or before you lost your job? over $100,000 a year, okay. So your second MBA, okay, not that you need even if one MBA, but if you have one MBA, amazing, okay, it doesn't mean that with your MBA you are going to get hired clearly unless you have interview skills, good interview skills. So I said, with that second MBA, you're going to actually be spending $200,000 to get it because even though you're not paying $200,000 to get the actual MBA, you're not making that money. And that money is money that you could have used toward, towards your retirement, building your home, doing something with that money. So you need to start being more critical as to what you spend your time on. And when you have a problem in front of you, don't just look the other way. The problem doesn't go away necessarily, right? It doesn't mean that you come out of your second MBA and all of a sudden you have a job. Well, what happened with the first MBA? I didn't know that now you have you need two MBAs to be able to get hired. And I want to tell you this, and I never thought that I was going to share this openly, 
But thanks to LinkedIn and thanks to the confidence that LinkedIn has given me, like tr truthfully speaking, LinkedIn has changed my life in more ways than I can describe. It's changed it personally, professionally, and financially. And I can tell you that three years ago, when I first started engaging on LinkedIn and building my community, and I didn't know what I was doing, um, I didn't want people to know that I didn't have a university degree. I went to university here in Canada, but I didn't finish university. I switched over, I dropped out, and I switched over to college. Okay, for those in the US, college comes before university. <laughs> it's between high school and, and university, right? Um, and I switched over to a, to a college. I got a one-year diploma, right? You make decisions, right, in your life. You have to make decisions and you have to own them. But three years ago, I didn't feel comfortable speaking about this openly. I was hoping that no one could tell that they didn't have a university degree. I wanted my paper on the wall like everybody else or like most other people, right? Um, thank God my parents suggested, hey, you can't just drop out of university and do nothing and just work. No, you need to get some post-secondary education. So I got my college uh, education and I was thankful to it. The first week I was in college, okay, I had it again. I had dropped out of university. I didn't have a diploma yet because it was my first week. I was hired by two organizations. The first one, it was the college itself for me to teach what I was actually learning. They were paying me a fortune just to teach what I was learning. And besides that, I was hired by the government of Canada at 22 years of age. So I was hired twice by the government of Canada. Once when, when I was 22 years old, one when I was once when I was 35 or 36. Okay, so you don't necessarily need this. So I want to make sure that people understand that you don't necessarily need to rely on your education to be able to get hired. Sure, if you have education, it's amazing. Kudos to you for you know putting through one year of education or four years of education or, or even longer. But just know that what employers are looking for is the right attitude because attitude is greater than aptitude, okay? So when the, when you go to an interview, and we are going to go through this at, you know, on a different live session, they're looking for someone who really stands out, for someone who is not like everybody else because to find someone like everybody else, they know exactly where to go and find you, right? Everybody answers the exact same way. Everybody behaves the exact same way. You need to start thinking that you need to stand out, whether it is through your resume to attract interviews, whether it is with your interview skills to attract offers, and even with your negotiation skills to show them that, hey, you know what value you're bringing to the table. So you really need, if you're struggling professionally, if you're not being recognized for the value that you bring to the table, you need to recognize that, hey, you need to stop being like everybody else. Because to find someone like everybody else, they know exactly where to find that person. If you want to put some urgency into their hiring process, you need to stop being like everybody else. Just be yourself. Embrace exactly who you are, your values, your personality. Allow yourself to just be and connect with the person in front of you. And you will see how much further that takes you. Giuseppe, you have an MBA, right? How do you make no, the most? No, no. I don't have an MBA. I have a master's degree in human resources, which is ah, masters, <laughs> masters, masters. Okay. Yeah. Have you made the most out of this? How much your education has taken? How how far has it taken you? Uh, so my my engineering degree, my my engineering license, and my master's degree are the most expensive, expensive cup coasters that I've ever owned. <laughs> uh, say say that, say that again. The coasters are what you put under your under your glass. <laughs> under, under, under my glass. Like, then I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't educate yourself. That's not what I'm saying. Because all, all of this going through the basic qualification, know when the market wants, gets you the interview. And that's it. <laughs> There's a lot more. Uh, so if once you know how to make a personal connection with somebody, then you're gonna stand out you need to have a, a good mix between technical skills and, and and your personality and just yourself it, just to go a little bit uh, just a little bit off topic here there's two things that i want to to add first there is the uh, I, I was going through the comment there's one person saying education equals success but this person is called linkedin user <laughs> so if you're commenting on on, on somebody else's a uh, also, whatever, make sure you're visible because otherwise you're doing yourself a disservice. 
Nobody knows who you are. Maybe your message was amazing, but nobody will be able to find you. So go to your settings and put your 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 picture and your name uh, visible. Because for now, everybody see, sees you as LinkedIn users, so nobody knows who you are. So be careful with that. Uh, and second, this is a little off topic, but I, I, I just want to to address this for everyone that I, I, I know they're struggling a little bit. Uh, this guy called uh, Christian Chubu, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, that I can, I can see he wants to, to emigrate to, to Canada and wants the, uh, that says firsthand of who, somebody who has emigrated. And we, we have done that, but not through, through working. Applying for, for jobs or for career opportunities from abroad, it's very complicated, not impossible, but it's very complicated. And the reason we advise against it is because there's so many, so many scammers out there that promise you, hey, I'm going to get your job in Canada. They take your money and they run away. 9.9% out of percent of, 9 out of 10, <laughs> hey, 9 out of 10 times, I want to say percent and 9 out of 10, and my brain didn't work. But 9 out of 10 is going to be a scam. So be very careful because remember, for, for a Canadian company to hire somebody from abroad, they need to hire, first look within the province, and then within the city, then within the country, and then justify that to the government of Canada that they didn't even find somebody within the country to bring somebody from abroad. That's very, something very special. Like, so it happens, but it's, it's very, very rare. So don't rely on, on just applying online because chances are you're going to just meet frustration. If you want to immigrate, again, I'm not an immigration consultant. It's just, a, just my own experience. But ask a proper immigration consultant, what are your options? Might be a student visa, might be applying for your permanent residence from abroad. Uh, each, each person has a different uh, background, different options. Uh, but just what I want to say is that if, because pe a lot of people reach out to me, hey, I need a job in Canada, can you help me? And sadly, my answer is no. <laughs> I can teach you everything to get a job, to get a new amazing career opportunity in your, in your country probably in your, within your city, because that's coming to Canada. It is possible. It is very possible, but it's not an overnight thing. It's a process, and there is a lot of steps that you need to go through. So go to an immigration, a proper immigration consultant, and don't just rely to somebody that, want, that it's promising you to, hey, I'm going to get your job in Canada, because 9 out of 10, it's a scam, and they're going to take your money. Like, I've seen it happen way too many times. People have reached more, more, more Brian than me, but reach out to him. Like, hey, I paid ten thousand dollars and and no, nothing happens. Like, yeah, you shouldn't have <laughs> because that, that they, what they do is just well, market me, your resume and that's it. And it's not how it works. Let me share. So, lots of job seekers, and hopefully this opens your eyes. And if you ever come across someone like a friend or a relative who is going through this or considering this. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't share what they are going through. So they find it, they, they learn the hard way. And then eventually when things don't work out, that's when you learn that it didn't work out for them. So it's it's difficult for you to warn them. But basically what you need to know is there are a lot of people who are trying to pay to to get a job, right? They're paying maybe $5,000, $10,000 to, to get a job, to be able to get the paper that they need to be able to immigrate to Canada or maybe other countries too. But I'm speaking... With regards to Canada, because I've spoken to a lot of people, lots of job seekers, people who wanted to immigrate here. Um, now, you might be thinking, I don't have that kind of money, so I guess I would never fall into this. Well, these scammers, they don't care how much money you have, right? They will go after however mo however much or little you have. If you have even hundreds or a thousand dollars, they will take it all from you. They will just sell you hope. Again, if you want to learn about this, you can go here. Where is it that they put it? Go, you can go to canadadreamlife.com and learn. It's a free web class. Go and learn. Understand why Giuseppe was saying what he was saying. And again, organizations need to be able to demonstrate that there is a need for you and that nobody else can actually do what you do. Okay. So why is that? Because a country needs to look after its own people first, right? I mean, the country has a responsibility to provide a future for everybody who's living in this country. Of course, Canada wants to bring bring 1.3 million people in the next three years, but they have a responsibility to make sure that everybody who lives here within right. Canada, that they are able to make the most out of this, out of this country, okay? So, and Canada, just so you know, it's built by immigrants. So- We are immigrants. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? 
We are immigrants. We are Those immigrants. Are right? you can tell. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can tell by our accents. I want to show <laughs> one thing. Uh, what Giuseppe was mentioning with regards to visibility. Again, if we find any of these comments uh, that don't show a, a face or they don't show a name, right? For example, let me see. Here's, for example, Innocent Eriaremian, okay? He doesn't show a photo. We don't know whether he has a photo or not, but let me see if I can find another one. Well, here you have Beverly, but here you have LinkedIn user. This is what Giuseppe was referring to before. No photo, no name, no last name. So how do we fix this? We fix this by going to, I'm going to show you, give me one second. We go and show you step by step, okay? So that you don't get lost. So we go to the top here. We go here to me, okay? And then we go to settings and privacy. Do you see this here? Or is it too small? So basically you go to that menu, settings and privacy, and then you go to visibility. And the visibility, you click on that. And then here you can say, who can see your last name? So you can set it as last name or just your initial. I feel comfortable with my last name and I want anybody to be able to recognize me. I Again, that's a very personal preference. You decide how you want to be seen okay and here profile visibility of linkedin why is this important here so if you set yes to if you set it to yes this your profile can actually be seen off linkedin but you might be wondering why off linkedin we are on linkedin right now well because linkedin leverages this other technology in this case i'm leveraging something called Streamyard. it's two technologies working together but for Streamyard to be able to show your profile, just like, let's look at somebody else, just like, for example, Ankit Verma, okay? You need to have that setting set to yes, okay? So again, here you can see the setting, right? Uh, let's see if we can see image, where's the image? But everything is here under visibility, okay? Uh, profile viewing options, that's not it. It's your profile. Let's see if I can do a command F and find image photo. Can you find photo? No. Do you know? Do you remember where it is? By any chance? Mm, hey, you do this video. Consider that you have everything active, so that probably doesn't show anything. But uh, there's normally options that that let's say protect you from from somebody that is not within your network your immediate network to to not see you and if you're networking you want to remove that option <laughs> so you have to be careful with that in, in your case it's already is look go up go up a little bit right see there's a, the anonymous option was was activated you have to activate the the first one okay. you never can like okay profile viewing that, that, so, that's the only one. if you're using so for, the third one you're going to appear as a LinkedIn user and you don't want that. Uh, perfect. Yeah, you're right. So with this option, when you're checking out somebody else's profile, they're going to see that you check them out. So in my case, I don't want people to be seeing when I check out their profiles. Not that they do it often. <laughs> I don't remember. Probably in the last two years, I haven't checked anybody's profile. But if I ever check their profile, I don't care for them to see that they, that they checked it. So I have it set to private mode. But again, you're missing out if you're interacting here on LinkedIn Live um, other people might not be able to see you, and this is for you to get more ex to get more exposure, really, more than anything else. So the more you interact, the more exposure you get. Uh, both uh, Giuseppe and I are connected to a lot of people. You never know. If someone, we don't want to make any promises that if you comment here, someone else might be able to spot you and offer you a job. That would be giving you false hope. But yeah, the more you interact, the more you engage, the the more questions you ask, the more value you add not just on LinkedIn Live, but in general, any conversation, not just on LinkedIn, again, anywhere you go, right? You go to a party. I mean, if you want to be memorable, you have to add value to the people that you just met. So you add value. You, are, you try to chime in with something that they will remember, right? With your personality, with something that you said. Um, and that's the way that people are going to start opening doors for you, okay? It's happened to me countless times. So going back to defining your next amazing job, 
Giuseppe. What do they do? They look at the market, okay? Exactly. They, yes. have, they, they look at the responsibilities, which is a section that we didn't speak about. The responsibilities within that job description, right? Because under the responsibilities, it will tell you everything that you should that you're responsible for. And if you don't care to do those kinds of things, then what's the point of actually taking that role? Right? Exactly. So you you need that this level of, of self awareness Just just to answer the the, the question of, of the random LinkedIn user. Uh, also, little disclaimer: if you're gonna ask these adamant uh, questions that add a little bit of hate, at least make sure you have good grammar, <laughs> because it was also poorly spelled. Um, but the, the, this person asked: uh, it is a universal concept. Answer is absolutely yes. For everything you do, you need self awareness. And you need to know where you're aiming, and this is not this is not only that is not as oh we just came up with it. All of our clients, all of our experience, not to mention that we did a huge poll in the morning, more than fifteen hundred people replied, and and that was the answer. So everything just pointed to self awareness before you do anything, not only not only your your, your job search, but that's where that we're aiming right now. So is it is it a universal concept? Yes. And next time, check your grammar before, before pressing enter. <laughs> and so going back to, to what's the first thing they need to do, check the basic qualifications, check the responsibility, and see if there's a gap, if, if, there's a, if there's a good match within what you like and within what the market is looking for. And there's something that I'm going to add because I, I've had had this conversation before with, and again, this is the interesting part, not only with clients, but also with friends and with relatives. That's the reason I, I, can, I can give this insight. Is this first step, it's amazing for people who at least have some sort of notion of what they like. But there's a lot of people that don't know it yet. So this first step is, is good for them. But if you start networking, and again, we're going to have a, a LinkedIn Live. We're going to have so many more sessions of teaching you how to network, how to grow your network, how to start talking to people, this is step by step, so don't worry about it. But you also need to go through that process of networking of, or, or talking to people to see what, 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 what options are out there. there there's a concept uh, in LinkedIn that is, that is running a lot lately that is a hidden market. And they say 80%, whatever. nobody knows the actual percentage, okay? Uh, but a concept that, that I, I really, really like to explore is not about the actual hidden market, which means that the positions are not advertised, but the the hidden market that is not really hidden. And this is, this is something that I, I want everybody to, to, to grasp. And it's the position that, because all most positions, unless there are like, let's say the C-level or confidential searches, they're advertised somewhere. <laughs> But let's say you are a product owner, but you, you, you're really good at advertisement, at marketing, and you don't know it yet, which means you're not going to be looking at marketing jobs. You're not looking for that. So you don't know what the market is looking for. So that's your, I'm going to put it in quotation, but that's your hidden market. It's advertised somewhere, but you don't know about it. But if you start networking, you start talking to people, don't worry, we're going to go through that later. We're going to teach you how. But those people will, will, it, will, will tell you, hey, this might be better for you. Like you start talking to people and they will show you the opportunities, what is out there. That's your hidden market. And you have absolutely no idea how many opportunities are out there. I would say that's higher than 80%. And it's not hidden. It's out there. It's not visible to you because you're not looking for it. So if you don't have clarity of, of what you want or what you like, then start talking to people. Start, start researching. Start... Uh, don't be afraid to, to like, to comment, to follow people, to engage. You will learn that way what you like. Might be marketing, might be people, might be technical. I have no idea. Uh, it's, 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 it, it, there's a world of opportunities uh, out there. And, and you'll see there's a lot of, of, of job seekers that just get calls from, from people on their network. Yeah, I know this is not in your lane, but would you be interested in that? happens in not in big organizations it that's very unlikely to be honest but startups and and, and mid-sized companies they do a lot of referrals they talk a lot and that's how they grow their team 
and you have no idea how many opportunities you, you, you're gonna you're gonna get there so if you have clarity go to the market go, go to the market and analyze where the gap is and let's see if there's a match if you don't keep working keep talking because that hidden slash unhidden market is going to open up for you the more you network always be uh, networking and so do you don't, don't miss out on open opportunities we'll we'll go through there uh, later don't worry about it but the the takeaway here is follow the people that you like engage with their content like if you can create your own content for a valuable content start 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 and don't give up like believe me networking for the most part sometimes it can happen very soon yes it can but for the most part it's a long it, it, it's a long game so it's a snowball effect uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna uh, is, uh, let uh, brian talk after this uh, i used to have around the say ten thousand uh, sorry five thousand followers four thousand or something uh, on january before i start posting uh, posting constant and engaging with people. In the span of six months or so, I'm over 10,000 followers just by my content and my, by my, my engagement. And I haven't made a sales pitch once. <laughs> All of my clients have reached out to me first. And, and that's because it adds content, but it doesn't happen on the first month. It might not happen in the second, but it will happen if you continue doing it. So I really encourage you to do it. And now, Brian, you go. <laughs> you wanted to say something. So this has to do with uh, the biggest mistake, I think, that most users on LinkedIn make, which is first that they, are, they don't recognize the power of LinkedIn. They don't recognize what LinkedIn can do for them, right? They're just browsing, just scrolling through, not engaging with anyone, not recognizing that LinkedIn is the most professional platform. Right? And when I say the most professional, it's not the, the fact that it's been built the most professionally it's not about the platform itself it's the platform for professionals you have facebook you have instagram you have tiktok but linkedin is the one where all professionals congregate where we are having professional conversations and there are a lot of people who fail to recognize that they or maybe they see it and they are scared about this about how to engage how to interact they're just looking from the sidelines and unfortunately this is not helping them. They are choosing to stay silent. Um, and I know it, I mean, I know that you might have fear, like you might not feel comfortable engaging with others, but that's the way that I felt three years ago. And yet I managed to get some courage and come out of my shell and just start adding value to the, to the conversations that I found and then created my own content to the point that I've been able to create or to write my own original content 1,750 times. That's how many posts I've written, over 1,750 posts regularly. And that's because I committed to doing that on a regular basis. One of the things that I was, uh, so both Giuseppe and I, we, are, we love Clubhouse as well. We're on Clubhouse. Um, sharing as much value as we can on a regular basis. One of the things that Giuseppe was saying the other day was that there are two main problems that, that <laughs> professionals have on LinkedIn. The first one is that they don't start, right? They are here on LinkedIn, just like you guys are. And they're just watching, right? They're, you're benefiting somewhat, but you're not really leveraging the power, the strength of this amazing platform. You're just watching. You're not building any relationships. People don't know you. You don't know people really well because how can you get to know people if you're not building meaningful relationships? But then the second problem that we've seen is that there are people who start, they start creating content, but eventually they just give up. They just, you know, they go back to watching Netflix and, you know, videos on YouTube and playing video games, Candy Crush and doing nothing with their time, nothing meaningful. I understand we all need time to relax and entertain ourselves, right? Uh, but in moderation, you can be binge watching Netflix shows four hours a day or four hours a night, 365 days a year. That's a lot of hours that you didn't leverage for your own progress, personal, professional, financial, 
right? So if you're asking yourself why you're not making any progress, it's ask yourself where you're spending your time and your effort, right? So LinkedIn, I, I said it before, it has helped me grow personally, professionally, financially. I've said it so many times. And Giuseppe was giving one example before, which has to do with being a product owner and maybe liking marketing or business. I personally had no idea that I liked marketing. I mean, I don't necessarily like marketing as a, you know, as an industry, but through writing content on LinkedIn, I had to become a marketer. I had to start learning how to get my content to as many people as possible. So I can tell you that over the last week, my posts have reached 2.7 million people. And this is someone just like maybe some of you who didn't feel comfortable with even putting a like before. I wasn't putting a like because I, I felt intimidated. I, I, I just, I had fear. What, they, what about my colleagues or my manager? What if they think that I'm looking for new career opportunities? What if they think that because I am active on LinkedIn, I am not as committed to the organization? But somehow I managed to get past that fear and I put that first like. And although one like might not seem like much, that one like is the equivalent of you putting the key in the ignition and turning it. It's that spark that will start to move that engine, those cylinders within the engine. You can have 70 liters or gallons in the US. You can have a lot of, you know, gas in your tank, right? Fuel in your tank. But if there's no spark in the engine, that gas is not going to take you anywhere. It's just going to be there. Your vehicle is going to stay stationary. You need that first spark. And that first spark might be a like, right? And then you need another like, right? Typically, you have a lot of sparks to be able to start the engine. And then you need a lot more courage because to add content to other people's posts, you might question yourself, what kind of value do I have to say? Do, do I have to bring, right? Do I have anything valuable to add to that, to that post? Well, if you stop for a moment and you think and you ask yourself whether you had an experience, whether you have an opinion, a perspective, maybe something that happened to someone else, something that you read, you might be able to add something of value. So we see a lot of people just adding comments like, thanks for sharing, great post, great share. That doesn't take you anywhere. That's not how you're going to build any meaningful relationships with anyone, with anyone. Not the person who posted and not anyone who's, who's reading the comments that are within that thread, within that post. So it is super important that you recognize that anything or any time that you spend on LinkedIn can go one way or another. It can lead to nothing if you do nothing and you're just consuming and scrolling endlessly, just like we do on Instagram, for example, just keep on scrolling, right? Maybe you put a like, thumbs up, whatever it is. Or you take the time to stop and read and comprehend and internalize whatever it is that you read and add, add your two cents, right? And ask a question and start to build a relationship. So for anybody out there who is a job seeker, if you really want to start to build a relationship with, with recruiters, hiring managers, anyone that you think might lead you to that career opportunity that you're looking for, stop for a moment and add value. The more value you add to a conversation, the more likely someone will remember you. It's that simple. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to pay for jobs, right? Which is, again, a mistake that a lot of people do make and they get scammed. You don't have to beg. You don't have to reach out via direct message or private message or WhatsApp or email saying, got a job, right? Again, let's go, let's go back here. One second. Let's go back here. Let me hide this and let me hide this banner as well. By the way, take down this address, nextbatch.com. Don't leave, don't go there now, but after this stream, go there, add yourself. If you're struggling, if you want to, to find your next amazing job, go to nextbatch.com and we do a free web class, okay, on Thursday. So go take your seat so that you can attend, okay? So here you can see, um, now, one of, one of the options here, reach out with have a job, right? 19%. Interestingly, it's the second option, the second most voted option. 
Why? Because a lot of people on LinkedIn, they, they get these kinds of messages. If you're the type of user, and listen, no judgment here. Everybody's learning. If you're the type of user who's going around saying, hey, got a job, got a job, no one is going to remember you. You're not making a difference. If you ask yourself how, how life works, how you make the most out of life is by giving. And if you're reaching out to a stranger and you say, got a job, they're not going to go out of their way. I promise you, they're not going to go out of their way. They will say, yeah, sure, let me see. They're not going to care. They're not going to remember you. Giuseppe, you want to say something? No, pretty much just agreeing with, with what you say. It's if you if you're really looking look, looking for a job, you have to like learn how to network, how, how to start talking, it, how to start talking to people. If you just ask, hey, I need a job to everyone, not everyone is in a position to give you an opportunity. Not everyone is in a position to give you a job. Remember that. Hey, but for example, let let's say a, a recruiter is is looking for a mechanical engineer. You have look at the job description. You know you're a good fit. You apply for the role and you network with that recruiter. Don't say, I need a job, but say, hey, I, I look at the job description. These are my qualifications. Do you want to talk? Because everybody's actively looking for that role. Remember, do you really think they're not going to be happy to talk to you? They will. This, this, this will happen to me. And it's pretty good. <laughs> so don't just, random, uh, just randomly send those messages. Make sure who you're networking with and how you're networking with. Again, when we got to that part, we're going to give you more active, uh, more actionable uh, advice, like to put a little bit of a framework around it. But if you're struggling with that right now, just be mindful of who you're networking with. The, the same thing that I said before, if you're, if you're a new grad and you're networking with every recruiter that comes across your, your LinkedIn, your LinkedIn feed, half of them are not going to reply to you. Probably they're not even allowed to reply to, to, reply to you. So look for the ones that are going to be looking for people with your skills and they will be happy to talk to you so that that's another thing that you need to be mindful of and so i'm quitting this week <laughs> anyway the, yeah so wait so you know, i want to share we, we answer your questions a little bit uh, before so i don't know if, if you heard uh, but I, I hope i hope i really hope you did um, hold on hold on i want to say something about this uh, just to make sure that people don't make a mistake so it's amazing christian if you want to quit I hope that you have a plan, right? <laughs> you have a presentation that you're finding uh, that you got an offer, that everything is signed. Let's make sure that you do absolutely everything right. Don't put yourself in a dangerous situation, okay? There are a lot of people who they can't take it anymore, right? They're, they work for a micromanager. Their colleagues are mean. They have to commute really, really far. They don't like their mundane tasks that they're given. They don't enjoy their career anymore. I want to make sure we're crystal clear about this. If you quit and you don't have employment and you're looking and you need that employment to be able to survive, to feed your family, to feed yourself, if you quit and you don't have any, any income stream, then you're putting yourself in a really dangerous position. So I want to make sure that we are not incentivizing or, or advising people to do this unless they truly know what they're doing. Lots of people quit thinking that it's going to be easy to be able to get back on their feet and they don't contemplate how tough it is to do that. And why is it tough? Because when you're unemployed, and again, I don't want to, I don't want anybody who is unemployed to, to think, oh my God, I'm never go going to get employed again. No, you will get employed again, but it's just tougher. Okay. Employers tend to favor people who are employed. If you're employed, someone is basically saying that they desire you. Your current employer is saying indirectly, I desire you, right? The new employer, if they have to choose, they are going to choose, unfortunately, someone who is employed over someone who is not. Unfortunately, the majority of employers think, well, if that person is employed, that person must be more valuable. Not necessarily true. Let me ask you, how many of us have actually work with incompetent people who are employed <laughs> and our colleagues maybe were let go and you were like but this person was amazing and this person is still employed and this person is completely incompetent how many of us have gone through that well unfortunately a lot of employers don't see that and they're like well when we have to make a, a choice we have to hire someone we hire the person who is employed over someone who is not 
they don't have that clarity. So if you are employed and you want to quit, it's amazing that you want to quit. You want to take control. You want to start doing something that you really enjoy. Amazing. Congratulations. You're making a decision. But make sure that you are making it on solid ground. Giuseppe, do you want to add anything? Yeah, also remember that if you're employed, is you're you're in a stronger ground to make a, a negotiation for your next salary. Remember that. So don't uh, don't just quit without having another option. Like again, if it's absolutely necessary, well, it's your choice. But if you want our advice, just don't. <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm switching career for graphic design. I need to make well. Really good. Uh, our advice would, would see would be get a, a job offer before uh, resigning gives you more power, gives you give you an edge. But again, it, it's your choice. If you're using this time to study, it might work in your advantage too. But the, the the truth is, unless I start analyzing the market and I know what they want, I really can't give you a solid advice. I think that we do with our, with our clients is we understand what they want and we start digging into the market so they have a solid strategy. If, if you ask it, hey, I want to be a graphic designer, what should I do? Well, I have no idea. They're, because the the role and the location of the role plays a part. I, I would need, before give, anyone give you an answer, is they need to do the, the due diligence and the proper analysis. And well, there's a lot of people who wanted to come to Canada. And yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a process, honestly. I, I love <laughs> I love how it is like, yeah, just move to Canada. For anybody who is actually looking to move to Canada, just go to canadadreamlife.com, learn, don't get scammed. Please learn, watch the entire web class. A lot of people are like, yeah, watch your web class. No, you just watch seven minutes of my web class. You didn't understand the thing. Go back. It's like and an hour. <laughs> just, yeah, it's, it's an hour. It's an hour long. I put all that content together to protect you. But go and watch it. So when you register, it's free, by the way. Go register and then watch web plus it's an hour and then you learn how to make it to canada i mean there's a lot of content for you if you want to make it here just like giuseppe has he lives in vancouver beautiful city i've been there it's amazing i live in toronto i've been here for 18 years almost and giuseppe has been in in vancouver for four it's amazing but learn how to do it safely. Right, in 2016. So. 2016 five years okay so make the most out of this don't let anybody kill your dream if you have a dream don't waste your time don't waste your money unnecessarily just make the most out of this okay so it is possible you know it's very possible we wouldn't be here if it wasn't but there is a reason why some people succeed and some people don't and it's they got a plan they don't get over excited by somebody that over promises you they it is possible but the people that made it here and, and again i'm not talking just about immigration i'm talking about your career or, or your business or your whatever it takes time the the web class that, that we've built for thursday it took us eight months <laughs> only to build it the, the everything that, that, that we're putting there in that web class it, it took months besides all the previous experience that we had so it takes it, it takes time it, it's worth it. it it's really good but it takes time it takes effort it takes commitment so if you're if you really focus on on, on immigrating if you really focus on, on putting your business out, or you really focus on, on on getting a new career opportunity, change careers, you you can totally do it. But don't get over excited. And more importantly, the same thing that, that Brian said, don't give up in the second week. Because it takes time. It takes commitment, it takes effort, but it works. So I don't know, let's see what other people have to say. There's there's like a lot of comments, so it's really hard to, to, to keep up. It, yeah, it's really hard. Lots of comments. I appreciate the love. We'll go through these comments afterwards as well, and feel free to reach out to us. Yeah, Giuseppe, yeah, yeah. He, he can easily accept any connection requests because uh, he has only 10,000 fo 10, followers and connections, so he can accept every single one of them. If I show you my situation, um, I can't accept... Actually, let me show you. Just I just want to make sure that people are aware of how blocked I am. You, you maxed out at 30,000. So if you have yeah. 30,000 connections, you cannot get any more. People can only follow so, you. I, I will accept a few more people because uh, I have 29,997 connections. Okay, so I'll accept a few more people. I feel really, really bad about this thing because... Anybody who's new, who, who just sent me a connection request, they are at the top. And anybody who um, 
sorry, anybody who who has been waiting for me for months, they're at the bottom, but I have no way to get to the bottom. Let me show you this. I go to the bottom, it keeps on scrolling, right? Keeps on scrolling. So I have 1,516 relations. <laughs> okay. So it's really, let me show you this. Give me one second. If I zoom out. You can, you can see all these invitations, right? And then I can go to page 60. And I guess I can go to the end. But what? <laughs> no new invitations. Like, it, I guess it's not prepared for that many invitations. I don't know what happens with this. But what I wanted to show you is this. I'm going to accept the last three people who sent me connection requests. Give me one second. So I'm going to accept the last three here. Watch this. We went to 998, 999. 30,000, and watch what happens when I accept one more. So I'm going to zoom in again, once again, okay? I'm going to accept this. And you see how it says this invitation can't be accepted because you have reached the connection limit. So basically all these users here, 5957, cannot be accepted. I, it doesn't matter how much I try, cannot accept them. So if you ever see me on LinkedIn and you don't see that I accept your connection request, it's not that I don't want to, it's that LinkedIn doesn't let me. So what I can have is followers. Followers, LinkedIn has no problem with me having followers. I'll show you this. In this case, well, we appear there because we're live. But I have at this moment 235,640. If you enjoy this content, if you want to ask questions live, I mean, besides, besides you reaching out on WhatsApp, for example, if you want to reach out to Giuseppe, he has his WhatsApp number on his about. Um, I have my WhatsApp number on every post that I make. You can see it. You also see it here on my profile, right? Um, so you can reach out via WhatsApp. You can reach out via private message. You can reach out on the comments. You can reach out. There are so many different ways that you can reach out. You can go on some, someone's profile. You can go to more. Oh, where was it? Sorry. Um, I don't remember where, where this was. But there is an option, oh, contact info, sorry, where you can go and you can find someone's um, contact information, right, and the, and the website. So there are many ways that you can reach out. So don't just sit there on my connections, my pending connections, because unfortunately, I don't know what you want or what I can do for you. But I'll be more than happy to learn more about, about you and, and help you advance in your career and make the most out of this. Exactly. So just, 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 to, just to wrap this up, okay. uh, follow us. Uh, and Try to, try to engage with the with with questions because it's not for us. Like the, the our posts have pretty pretty good reach. It's, it's not like hey, do it for us. It's not for us. But the more people that see the post and see your comment, it's gonna give you way more exposure. So every time you wanna add something, add a question. I'm doing my best to reply to every comment. Uh, if it's not now, it's gonna be at the end of the day. But every time I have some free time, I'll reply to the comments. So, we start making a thread. If you have any, any any questions, ask us. Ask us on the on the comments. Ask us here on live. We're gonna be here almost almost every day. Uh, answer your questions, going step by step through all the process that we've wor been working on for the for the past eight months, little by little, to everything that we've, we've put together. Uh, if you're still struggling, there's gonna be every single Thursday. There's gonna be a free web class uh, for you if you're if you're struggling to to get your your next job offer. There's everything for you to succeed. And the good thing is that engaging, talking to us, getting our answers is absolutely free. The web class is free, so go for it. Enjoy. Get the get the best get the get the get the best out of it. So. Absolutely. So what Giuseppe is referring to is, where is it? Over here, right? Yeah. So yeah. go to nextbatch.com, sign up there. It's free. It's for you. Uh, we wanted to have clarity. So what do we discuss there? You'll see on their website, but basically there are three secrets, things that a lot of people don't talk about. So first of all, let me ask you this question to everybody. Do you still tailor your resume for every single job description out there? Do you, Are you that type of person that or professional that just found uh, a job description and you're like, oh, that's the one that I really want to apply to. So yeah, I'm going to apply when I get home and then I'm going to update my, my resume and I'm going to submit it. And then by the moment that you actually submit it, there are dozens of people who already applied for it. Are you that, is that happening to you? Let us know. Um, 
Did you know that you don't have to update your resume for every single job description? That the first key again, and this goes back to finding your next amazing job, but first defining it, defining what it is that you want to do. You should actually be updating your resume for the role that you're interested in, not for the job description. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between being a product owner at organization A versus organization B? There's no difference. It's the exact same role. So why should I have to update my resume for every single job description? It's time consuming. It's frustrating, especially when they don't get back to you, right? When they don't even acknowledge the fact that you applied or they get back to you three months later saying, oh, we picked someone else, right? Like, what's the point? What's the point? So don't waste your time. You should be able to apply to dozens of jobs within minutes. You can, you can literally apply to every single job opening in the market in 15 minutes or 15 minutes per day if there are new job openings coming up on a, on a daily basis. So that's the first thing that we talk about. The second one has to do with what we define shark, as shark questions. Those questions that they ask you during the interview that you have no idea how to answer. And most job seekers are intimidated even before they get those, those shark questions. They are thinking before the interview, what if they ask me this? Or what if they ask me that? Or what if they ask me something that I didn't even think they would ask me? How would I handle those kinds of situations? So we talk about that as, a, that as well. How you can actually navigate through a sharp question, a question that you know nothing about, and actually leverage it to your advantage. How can you leverage that sharp question and position you in a way that you can earn their respect and their trust? Okay, I'm talking about the interviewer. How you can leverage a question that you knew nothing about to position yourself favorably as compared to everybody else, right? So that's the second secret that we cover in that web class. And the third one is your negotiation. Why continue to work for employers and be compensated unfairly? I'm talking about your salary and everything else that comes with it, right? Now that you can bring in so many more interviews with your job, with, with your resume that you have tailored for the role and not for the actual job description, you will bring in so many more interviews because you're applying first before anybody else with a really good resume. I mean, I've shown Giuseppe and so many others. We've gotten my resume and so many other, other people's resumes to a 100% ATS match rate. You can actually watch that. Giuseppe, I don't know about you and everybody that you've talked to, but most people talk about this ATS match rate blindly. They don't, they don't even know what it is. They, they've never seen it. They've never seen it in action. So we actually show it how it works. So join us. Watch how that works. Get more interviews. Learn how to crack an interview to get the offers. And once you have multiple offers, learn how to negotiate it so that you make the most out of it. But what's key is for you to understand that an interview doesn't get you the job, okay? The resume gets you interviews. When you go to the interview, you have to make them fall in love with you. So they give you the offer. And the more offers you get, the, the stronger your position to be able to negotiate a better compensation. And let's remember, HR professionals don't actually give you the best offer at first. They're happy to entertain a different offer to negotiate with you. But the first offer that they give you is not their best. So learn how to negotiate and when to negotiate. Okay. Just have anything else that you want to add before we wrap up. And I'm sorry that I, I didn't get a chance to show everybody's comments on the screen, but we'll try to go through them. Feel free also to reach out to us to be proactive. If there's anything that you'd like to discuss in more detail, if you're stuck, um, but again, go to nextbatch.com as well. So you can ask us more questions on Thursday. Uh, just have anything that you want to add. No, just say thank you for everyone that attended. We're gonna be here again tomorrow answering your question. In the morning, we both um, uh, normally we do a poll regarding what <clears throat> sorry we're gonna discuss on the on the live. So if you have any, if you see the poll and you have any questions that want to you want to be answered, ask it on that on that post. I'm gonna address it on the on on the live. Not if there's a lot of questions, it's gonna be hard. We're gonna pick like the best ones, that the ones that we know they're gonna benefit the most people, and we're gonna tag that. So we're pretty much gonna go through one topic each day. So. If you see the, the the post and the poll in the morning, answer the poll, like, comment, put a meaningful questions, and we're gonna answer that probably two, three hours later on, on LinkedIn Live. 
and let's stay connected. That's all. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll do this regularly. So again, don't forget to follow Giuseppe. Follow me. You will get a notification once you follow me because I was I will show this LinkedIn live. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. So as soon as you see us go live, ask any questions you have so we can try to answer them. Okay. And thank you again for your kind support and love from everywhere across the, the world. And if you are in any country that is going through any type of difficulties from Haiti or from Afghanistan, sending much love to you and hope that your loved ones and your friends are doing well and keeping safe. See you tomorrow. God willing. Thank See you me. tomorrow, everyone. Thank you, Giuseppe. Bye. Thank you.